Hey, Barrett Edelstein here, your celeb expert and your celeb savant. Celeb Savant is a weekly entertainment show. We have long-form career retrospective type interviews with celebrities, singers, actors, and industry experts. On this episode of Celeb Savant, I'll be speaking to American singer-songwriter, actress, and dancer, Shanice. Shanice began her acting and performing career as a child, starting out in the first season of Kids Incorporated. She has acted and performed in a number of series since then and has had a number of hit singles on the charts, namely I Love Your Smile, A Silent Prayer, Saving Forever For You, When I Close My Eyes, amongst many others. Shanice's entertainment career has spanned nearly four decades on stage, performing live, releasing music and on television. She's also an entrepreneur in the beauty space. Up next on Celeb Savant, we've got Shanice. Where do we find you in the world? What's happening in your life? And how are you doing? I am doing great. I am in California and I just started a cosmetic line called Smile by Shanice. So you can go to smilebyshanice.com and check out my lipstick. My new lipstick line is vegan. I'm really excited about it. It's something that outside of singing that I'm also passionate about. I've always been into cosmetics. You know, even when Smile came out, I was I was like, man, it would be nice. I said this back then. I said it would be nice to have a lipstick called Smile. I've always wanted to do that. So finally, you know, I did a, a lot of research and and I found a product that works works for me and it's vegan and and I'm excited about it. And also, I'm working on new music. Um, I've been doing a lot of like acting and theater, and so just a lot of touring. Been doing a lot of shows. So just keeping myself busy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you say the brand Smile, you would have thought by now, and I'm glad you got the name, but you would have thought yeah. by now someone would have come up with the name previously because it's Smile Lipstick. It's it's so natural, but I'm glad that you got that first. <laughs> exactly. And I wanted to do it back in the day, but I didn't know, like in the 90s, I didn't know how to like start a business. And mm-hmm. I didn't even know where to begin, you know, but I guess timing is everything. And I guess this was the perfect time. Yeah. <laughs> to make everyone smile. There we go. <laughs> I know it's uh, many years of the Shanice story in the entertainment business, starting as a kid in acting. So the hybrid version or the non-hybrid version of the Shanice entertainment music journey and story. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and um, I come from a musical family. My mom sings and my mom and my aunt, they had a singing group together. And so, um, and my dad is a guitarist. My mom's, my stepdad is a singer. So I'm I'm just like surrounded by music. But when I was um, eight years old, we left Pittsburgh and we got on this bus and took the bus from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to California so that my mom and my aunt could pursue their singing careers. Well, when we got here, I said, I want to sing too, you know, because when I was three years old, they put me on stage with them for the first time. So I got to perform with them on stage at three. I fell in love with it. And I knew at an early age that I wanted to be a singer. So when we moved to California, my mom found a commercial agent for me. So I started going out, out on auditions for commercials. And then my first big opportunity was I booked a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial with Ella Fitzgerald, scatting with her in the commercial. And um, so that was like the beginning of it all. Um, After that, I booked several other commercials. And then my mom used to send me to this um, school on the weekends. It was like, it was, uh, they would teach you singing, dancing, acting. And um, so I'd stay there on Saturdays, like all day and just take classes. And Chip Fields, who is Kim Fields' mom, the actress, she uh, taught me how to act. And she put me on stage when I was like eight or nine years old for the first time. And I started out doing theater. So I did a show with Kim Fields, Malcolm Jamal Warner. It was a bunch of amazing actors. And and that was like my first big like stage opportunity. And from there, I was 10 years old and I auditioned for a show called Kids Incorporated. Um, that show starred uh, Fergie uh, was in it. She was a little girl at the time. We were all kids. And Rasan Patterson, um, Martika, 
we were in a guy named uh, Jerry Sherrill. And and so we were all in that. And then I left after the first season because they wouldn't allow me to sing. They hired me. I auditioned to be a singer on the show, but they hired me to be a dancer and a keyboard player. And I was like, I would sing. So I left the show after about a year, after the first season. So after that, I auditioned for Star Search. And I won a junior star search. And then I did another play, another musical um, called Get Happy. And that music, that musical was about the music of Harold Arlen, um, songwriter who he wrote some of the rainbow and all the Wizard of Oz songs. Yep. So I, I did that musical and John McClain uh, heard about me and came to hear me sing in the musical and signed me when I was 11 years old to uh, A&M Records. Now, John McClain is now over Michael Jackson's estate. So I got my first record deal when I was 11 years old, assigned to A&M. One of the first producers I worked with was Tina Marie. I went in the studio uh, when I was 11 and I recorded a song with Tina Marie, Ricky Bell and Ralph Tresvan from New Edition. I had some amazing, I worked with Dick Rudolph, who was a uh, Minnie Ripperton's widower. I worked with him. I had some amazing people. So I, I re- recorded a whole album that wasn't released. So I did that at 11. So uh, my first album came out when I was, when I turned 14, John McClain decided to change the direction of the album. And he put me in the studio with a, a songwriter producer named Brian Loren. And I went in with him and we, I did the whole album with him. And that was my first album in 87. It was called Discovery. So that came out in 87. And then after Discovery, I left a and Records and went to Motown Records. Gerald Busby signed me to Motown. Uh, and then put me in a studio with Narda Michael Walden. Yes. And the first day I met Narda, he said, can you just give me a hope, come up with some titles? Like, give me a bunch of name titles for songs. And I gave him a ton of titles, and we ended up using every last one of them except Silent Prayer. I came up with all the titles. And so we just started, we started with the title, and we started writing, building the songs around my titles that I came up with. So I Love Your Smile was one of the titles I came up with because I used to get teased all the time when I was in high school because kids said I would smile too much. They said, you're (laughs) always so happy, you know. And so I wrote down I Love Your Smile. And then we wanted to come up with with them. We came up with a melody that was catchy because we wanted people all over the world to sing along. Even if you speak the language, we wanted people to, you know, still be able to sing along. So that's how we came up with the, you know, catchy hook. And the funny thing is, when we finished the album, I liked I Love Your Smile, but I didn't think it was the right first single. I wanted Silent Prayer with Johnny Gill to be my first single. Okay. And the label said, no. They said, I Love Your Smile is the first single. And I was, I told the label, I was like, no, it's the wrong first single. And I said, people are going to think I'm too happy and they're going to think <laughs> I'm it's horny. And I just had all these excuses in my head. Yeah. You know, and I just didn't think it was the right first single. And Gerald Busby told me, he said, no, I'm releasing this and I'm not changing it. And I cried tears in his office. I was crying. I said, no, Gerald, it's the wrong first single. So he put it out and literally overnight, it just took off all over the world. It was like number one in so many countries. And um, I was obviously wrong on that one and still to this day i'm able to travel the world you know because of it grammy nominated i was nominated for a grammy yeah now i do believe that the label made a mistake with the second single the second single was a song called i'm crying yeah so i told girl i said you can't go from smiling to crying like that's just like (laughs) he's like i'm happy and you're going really sad and i put out silent prayer with johnny gill because at the time, the Persian Gulf War was going on and we needed prayer in the world. And I said, this the time is perfect. Johnny Gill is an amazing singer. We were At the time, we were label mates. And they said, no, we're going to put out I'm Crying, which I thought I'm, I'm Crying was a beautiful song, but it should not have been the second single, I don't think. And so then we put that out. And then Gerald Busby left Motown. So when he left Motown, I left Motown because Gerald was the one who signed me. And so... Eventually, I ended up signing with, I I signed with Clive Davis. I was actually signed to Arista. A lot of people don't know this, but I signed to with to Clive first. And then uh, Clive decided to take, to, to switch me over to LaFace Records because he had so many other female artists 
on Arista. And he asked me if I mind being on the face. And I was, I said, I would love baby face and Ellie Reed. And I said, yeah, I'd love to be on the face. So I ended up in 99 releasing an album on the uh, face records. A beautiful journey. And I lo- you know, the, the fact you were teased because you were smiling too much. <laughs> I was teased yeah. at school, but, but not for, <laughs> not for s- such a positive thing, but anyway, d- diverting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so- kids can, <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> totally agree <laughs> but yeah. Shanice, the difference between releasing music acting doing theater performing on stage they're all very different so what about each of them do you love and inspires you to keep going back to you know what i i don't know i just think it's, it's something in my it's just in my blood because when i was eight years old i used to sit in the closet and i used to pretend like i was in a, in a recording studio when i was <laughs> eight and i i used to write songs when i was eight years old i can't explain it but i just feel i don't know i'm just a creative person and i've been like this since i was a child and it's just something that i feel like i was born to do and yeah i i, I love doing it all i, I can't say i love one more than the other. Like I love singing live on stage, but I also love recording. I love acting. I love dancing. I love all of it. So I don't know. I can't explain. It's it's something that I can't really explain. It's just something that's in me that I think that was born. I was just born to do. Well, that's perfect. And so grateful that you are doing it. (laughs) So when you create a song, from zero to three to four to five minutes, however long the song is, what is your process? Obviously, it's over the years, different motivations, different inspirations. But is it always easy? And it, does it come naturally? Or is it sometimes a struggle? Tell us the Shanice journey of creating a song. You know, there's, I don't have like one particular way. You know, sometimes I'll come up with a melody off the top of my head. Or I'll come up with an idea or a lyric concept and a melody. And I, and I don't know how to play piano. So I'll take it to someone that can play and they'll like come up with the music based on my melody that I'm singing to them. Or sometimes people will give me a track that's already done and I'll come up with some ideas on top of a track that's already done. I did a, an independent project in uh, 2006 and it's called Every Woman Dreams. Yep. And for some reason, when I when I wrote on those songs, I felt more creative in the car. Like I would li- I would literally sit in front of my house in my car and put the songs on in the car. And for some reason, every time I'd sit in my car, I felt creative. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but it really helped to just sit in my car just by myself and and just create. But it's not always that way. Like it's just it varies. Um, I don't have like one particular way, but I do write melodies faster than I write lyrics. Like melodies come to comes to me faster than like writing a lyric. I can I write lyrics, it just takes me a little bit longer than creating melodies. And when you write or create music, I know you've uh, collaborated with a number of uh, different people, as you mentioned before. Do you prefer writing and creating by yourself or collaborating with others or either or? Well, I like to collaborate with others because you can kind of kind of feed off of each other, you know, um, because sometimes like you might get like stuck you know, on a lyric or stuck and then somebody might throw out an idea and you're like, oh yeah, that may work. And then when you put your ideas together, it's just like magic, you know, but sometimes I don't know. It's like, if I don't like to write with a whole lot of people at one time, sometimes like if there's like five different people in a room and everybody's just throwing out ideas at one time, at the same time, it's like, it's a little overwhelming sometimes, but I like to write with like maybe one other writer or two at the most, you know? And then sometimes I just like to write by myself because I can be a little shy. Like if I don't know you that well, Yes. Because I'm a little shy person naturally. Yeah. So sometimes uh, when I meet someone for the first time and I have to write with them, it's kind of like it takes me a minute to warm up. But, you know, I always, you know, get it done and I always make it work. But it depends. It depends. Yeah. I just I just don't like to write with more than two people at, at a time. Which makes sense because every person's got their own energy. And when there's so many energies in the room, that overwhelming could be like a tornado of energies of words energies vibrations when it's just yourself or just two people it allows for a calmer energy and a calmer energy exchange and interaction would you agree with that i totally agree i totally agree 
I did a session one time and it was like about five or six different <laughs> writers together. And we're all in a circle and everybody was singing a totally different melody at the same time. And my brain was like, oh my God, <laughs> it was so much. I couldn't, I couldn't be creative. I couldn't hear my own thoughts. And I was like, yeah. So I think it's better to like, if you're going to write with other writers, it's a great thing, but try to write with one or two, yeah. more, no more. It'll be every thought, the ideas would just be all over the place. Back in the day, they were, vinyls, cassettes, CDs. I'm completely grateful that they're all making a comeback because I love me a CD. I love holding the booklet. I love the lyrics. I love the, you know, the thank yous you guys put in the booklet. For me, it's a, a thank you to say to you, guys, you work so hard in just creating one song. So to put this production of work together. So I always like to say, it's like an energy to exchange to say thank you. Like I said, those... yeah. Physical elements, physicalities of the music world are making a comeback. But what are your thoughts around the digital platforms and the way people are consuming music now compared to before? You know, it has its pros and cons. Uh, the one thing I, I do like is that I feel like back in the day we were, it was so hard to put out music because you had to find an executive that would believe in you and then invest in you and put you out there. But now, you know, we can be independent. We can put out our own music. The independent artists can put their own music up on iTunes and Apple Music and Spotify and all mm -hmm. that. And so that's a great thing. I do miss like what you said about, you know, the artwork and, and saying thank you to everyone and letting everyone know there's, you know, it's not just me. It's like, you know, there was a, you know, other producers and writers and you know, I had a, an amazing stylist and makeup and hair. And, you know, it's like a whole team that it takes to really pull it all together, the image, the music. And, and I, I used to love like looking at the credits and like, oh, who wrote this song and who worked on this song? And yeah. just looking at the the, the artwork. It's I, I, I do miss that. Like, I hope that that totally makes a comeback where you know, you have to buy the the the, the, the actual like, like, well, I guess I don't know if CDs will ever come back, but. I miss seeing the artwork and open up the booklet and I miss that part. But I think this is a great time for independent artists because back in the day, it was hard like to get signed and, and to get somebody to believe in you and, and put you out there. And, you know, now because of the internet, you know, I, I mention this all the time, but it amazes me when I look at Justin Bieber, you know, singing on YouTube and now he's one of the biggest singers in the world and just from singing songs on YouTube. Yeah. So. Uh, I think there's more opportunity now for artists than it was back. Then. Well, you will be excited to know that in the end, what year are we now? 20, in the end of 2021, CDs had the biggest sales in 21 years and vinyls last year in the UK alone had their biggest sales. They had 5.5 million, the biggest sales since 1990. So they are Dang. definitely, yeah, they are definitely making a comeback, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> Yes, yes. I guess maybe because maybe the DJs were still buying vinyl and stuff. Yeah. Um, because I haven't seen a record player in a long time. <laughs> I don't even know anyone that owns a record player, but I do see DJs sometimes, you know, pulling out vinyl. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm actually glad to hear that because uh I want I feel like this generation should be able to experience what we you know, how we used to yes. experience music. <laughs> because it was an experience. It was a journey to know, okay, I'm going to save this amount for this month and budget. Okay, the next month I'm getting a Shanisa CD and that person's CD and that person's CD. Go to the CD shop or get it online, rush home, tear off the plastic, look at the pictures, see who the background singers are, put it on, listen to it as a journey from song 1 to 12 or 1 to 15. And that whole experience... Now, for a lot of people, it's still there or coming back, but a lot of people, especially the younger generation, they don't know that experience. It's just like, oh, I'll hop on Spotify, and if I don't like it, I'll skip the song. That's, that's true. And if you're really good at it, people are ripping, like, people can rip a song off of YouTube, but you don't have to pay for the song. You can just get it off of YouTube, or you can, people know how to rip it and not even pay, and they're downloading stuff for free, and you know, and that's the part that kind of sucks because that takes away from the artist, like making money and, you know, so it kind of hurts in that sense. Like back in the day, you had to go to the record store to buy the record. Like you yeah. had to spend the now you don't really have to spend the money. You can download it for free. 
And that's the part that I think is unfair. That's yeah. not fair. It's, it takes away from the the writers, the you know, and the artists. Exactly. And you guys put a lot of efforts and a lot of work to create one song. So right. uh, I, I'm on your side. I'm cheering you on. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I said. That's why I said it's like I'm, it's, there's pros and cons. Yes. What do you enjoy about performing live to a live audience? What is that feeling for you? Do you still get those nervous butterflies before you go on stage? I, I get extremely nervous before I have to go on stage, and I've been singing for a long time. <laughs> <I was laughs> but I've been singing for a long time, and I still get nervous. And uh, I get I get nervous before I go on, but once I get on stage, it goes away. And I just, I love singing live because I love the energy that the audience gives me. And just like, I just hearing people sing along to my songs. And it's really a good feeling when you're on stage and people know your music and you're singing along with you. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great feeling. So I love performing live, uh, but I do get really, really nervous <laughs> before I go on stage. And now it's different than it used to be because everybody has their, they're recording everything. So yes. it's like when you're live, you better nail it. You got that one time to get it right because you best believe it's going to be all over the internet. So that's the only thing. It's like, I don't like that part of it because it's like, oh my God. It, it makes me even more nervous when everyone's yeah. recording every and little thing. Every little thing. And what, what you speak of, I was just going to mention now. So I love being right up in front. I do do a couple of maybe recordings now for Celeb Survive for my socials to let people know. But I, I watch the people around me and everyone's trying to get the perfect video, perfect shot, perfect picture. And it's like, um, put your phones down, just be in the moment, enjoy the song and just be present. Yeah. I find that so many people are so try posting and videoing and taking away from that moment. It's like, just come back, be with us. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that's the part that I'm like, yeah, I don't like that part, but yeah. uh, it, I mean, it just it just makes me nervous. That's all, because it's okay. just like there's no room for mistakes. Like if you make yes. one little mistake, it's gonna be on, and they and, and no one will they won't play the good stuff. They they'll oh, yeah. play the mistake, and then they'll play that over and over again. And you're like, yeah, ah. I know yeah. exactly what you mean because the focus is on instead of the upliftment, positivity, and the greatness, it will be on like oh, they did this wrong and the negativity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Shanice, I love this game. My recipients don't always like it because I know if I had to ask you this question in two minutes, two days, 20 days, two hours, I know your answer will be different every time. But if I had to ask you in this moment, your top five songs by other artists that you would push play to once we finish on this recording, what would those five songs be and by whom? Oh my goodness, that is so hard. But no. <laughs> I, uh, Whitney Houston's um, I Will Always Love You. Okay. Uh, Michael Jackson's, um, oh gosh, every Michael Jackson's. <laughs> okay. I love, I mean, let's see. Uh, I love Butterflies by Michael Jackson. Okay. I Will Always, and I Have Nothing by Whitney. Okay. Uh, so that's three. Yes, two more. And, and then... Uh, I love the emotions. Uh, you know, best of my love. Yes. Love the emotion. Yes. Beautiful so song. I, that's how. That's actually how I learned how to harmonize. I didn't know how to harmonize until, you know, I was little and I would listen to the emotions and my mom would sing along with me and she would, you know, teach me how to harmonize oh, wow. just by, you know, singing along to the emotions. So, um, I have to say the emotions. Yes. Um, best of my love. One more. One more. Uh, one more. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. One more. Uh, I love Michael. I love. I love Tina Marie. Um, Deja Vu by Tina Marie. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant so list. Many, I love it. <laughs> there's so many I know songs. It's hard. I, I know everything. I, there's so many songs that I, I know. love. So I know. I know. That's why. And that's why I said, you know, when I ask you this question in two days, two minutes, or any other time, it'll be a different list. So, oh, absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. But it's like. Yeah. Thousands of them, so many thousands of them. So yeah. Shanice, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. My main listening audience is in the US and the UK and Australia, fourth is South Africa. So as a final message to the listening audience, what would you like to say? I would like to say to everyone, thank you for supporting me over the years. Like, you know, I love your smile. And my first album, Discovery, came out in 87. Smile came out in like 91, 92. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you 
you know, so many years later, I'm still touring the world. I'm still singing and, and I couldn't do it without everyone's support. So I just want to thank everybody all over the world for supporting my music all these years. And, and um, there's much more to come. I'm back in the studio, so I'll be hitting you with more music. And I'm not actually working on trying to put a tour together. So I'll keep you posted uh, when that happens, because you never know, I might be in your, in your town. <laughs> well, that, I'll be cheering right, right up in front and then we're going for coffee afterwards or drinks, whatever you want. <laughs> that would be great. I'm Love a coffee girl. I'm coffee. All, uh, yeah, I'm more of a, a water person <laughs> than drinks or coffee. So <laughs> perfect. I look forward to meeting you in person when you come here. So as Shani says, guys, keep smiling and keep yes. positive and enjoy the music. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on your show.